Hello and welcome to this Proxmox tutorial on Ceph storage. I am Computerized William, and in this video I will show you the installation of a distributed Ceph storage on an existing 3-node Proxmox VE cluster. At the end of this tutorial you will know how to build a free and open source hyper-converged virtualization and storage cluster. In this example I use three identical Xeon D servers for my three node Proxmox VE cluster. Every node has got a Xeon D with six cores and hyper threading. And 64 GB RAM. The OS is installed on a fast Samsung 240 GB NVM Express SSD. As we will run the Ceph monitors on these disks, it is very important that we only use fast and reliable SSD. For the Ceph OSDs, I have two enterprise class Samsung SM863 SSDs in each server. For this demo I only use 240 GB SSDs, but you can get them also with 2 TB. This Xeon D servers are in a 1U chassis with 4 hot swap cases in a very space and energy efficient package. All three nodes have the same hardware configuration. The main board offers dual 1 gbit network and dual 10 gbit. This is perfectly suited for our needs. The first gigabit NIC ETH0 is used for the VM Bridge 0. VMBR0. The second NIC ETH1 is used for the Proxmox VE cluster communication. And both 10 gigabit NICs ETH2 and ETH3 are used for the Ceph cluster in bonding mode. In this special case, just three nodes, I can connect these servers without using a 10 gigabit switch, therefore for bond mode I choose, broadcast. All three nodes have the same network configuration, only with different IP address. The first step is to install the Ceph packages. Just open a shell and install the Ceph packages with the command pve ceph install dash dash version dual. Do the same on the second node. and also on the third node. As soon as we've got all packages installed, we need to initialize Ceph on the first node. Open a shell and type pve ceph init dash dash network 10.10.10.0 slash 24. Make sure you use the 10 gbit network. In this example, this is the network from bond 0. Now create the first ceph monitor by typing pve ceph create mon. Then continue on the GUI. To obtain redundancy, create a second Ceph monitor on the second node. And a third Ceph monitor on the third node. With three monitors you will still have quorum even if one node is down. Now we are ready to create all the Ceph OSDs. The OSD is the place where your data will be stored. Each OSD needs a complete disk. Go to Ceph OSD 
and click Create OSD. As I already use fast SSDs here, I can store the journal on the same device. Let's do the same for the second OSD. After reloading the page you will see OSD.0 and OSD.1 on the first node. Now go to the second node, and click again on Create OSD for the first SSD. And also for the second one. After reloading the page you will see OSD.2 and OSD.3 on the second node. Repeat the same for the third node. You will get OSD.4 and OSD.5. Finally, you will see 6 OSDs in total on all 3 nodes. In order to use Ceph for your virtual machines and your containers, you need to create 2 pools. One for virtual machines and one for containers. Go to Pools, and click Create. Enter a suitable name. I choose, Ceph VM. The size parameter specifies the replication count. To get reliable pool, you need to set the count to 3, and the minimum replication is 2. Be careful when choosing the number of placement groups, you can easily increase the number later but you never can reduce the number. Before starting, calculate the right number for your expected use case with the calculator on the Ceph website. Check ceph.com slash pgcook. My second pool will be used for LXC containers, so I name it Ceph LXC. To do benchmarks, I also create a test pool named Test3. And because I don't need the RBD pool, I remove it. Now let's take a look on the Ceph dashboard. It shows the status of your monitor hosts. The health warn shows a monitor clock skew detected. This will go away automatically as soon as the time is fine again. Also the dashboard shows your OSDs, the placement groups, and some performance statistics. Let's do a simple RADOS benchmark. Just open the shell and run a 10 seconds RADOS write benchmark. Type RADOS dash P test 3 bench 10 write dash dash no cleanup. We have a write performance of 420 MB per second. To do a read test type, RADOS, dash P, test 3, bench, 10 sec. Here we have a read performance of 2600 MB per second. If you want to get rid of this test data, just remove the test 3 pool. In order to use a pool as Proxmox storage you need to add the RBD storage via GUI. First, click on Data Center and on Storage and add RBD storage. 
first I create the storage for virtual machines, using the pool CephVM. I also use CephVM for the storage name. In monitors, add all three IP address from your Ceph monitors. Do the same for the Ceph LXC pool. But this time you need to enable container as well as KRBD because this is needed for LXC containers. The last step is copying the keyring. Open a shell and change directory into slash etc slash pve slash priv slash. Create the Ceph directory with make directory Ceph. And place a copy of the keyring for each storage name. Type copy slash etc slash Ceph slash Ceph dot client dot admin dot keyring Ceph slash Ceph minus vm dot keyring. And for the second LXC pool, type copy slash etc slash ceph slash ceph dot client dot admin dot keyring ceph slash ceph minus lxc dot keyring. Now you can see the storage in the GUI summary. And we are ready to use ceph for our virtual machines and containers. Let's add a ceph hard disk to the Debian stretch virtual machine in this example to do a simple benchmark. Go to Hardware, add, choose Hardware, and choose the storage Ceph VM. Check Discard, and click Add. Open a console with double clicking. You can see the new hard disk and can start the benchmark. I have about 380 MB write and 2.5 GB read speed, slightly slower than the RADOS benchmark, so this looks great. Check again your Ceph dashboard. The dashboard provides an overview about your Ceph status, the monitors, the OSD, and of course some performance statistics. To learn more, check out the article on Ceph server in our wiki documentation. Go to pve.proxmarks.com slash wiki slash Ceph server. I hope the video could help you to install Ceph server on your Proxmox VE to build a complete free and open source hyper-converged virtualization and storage cluster. If you need further help, Ask a question in the Proxmox community forum or purchase a subscription for direct help from our support team. Thank you for watching.